I haven't, you know. I mean, I've been in a lot of locker room celebrations. I've been fortunate, but, I, but I've always been a guy that's been a little bit more behind the scenes. And, you know, I let Coach Few go in there and do that type of stuff. Uh, to be honest with you, it literally caught me off guard. I was going to go in there and congratulate the guys and tell them we got some work to do. And, and uh, you know, it was a great moment, a great moment for those guys. I mean, they're, they, they've been a real special group to, uh, to be associated with every day. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm lucky to be coaching them. How did you think the flow of the offense was tonight? Um, you know, I mean, you know, we, we saw some zone and we kind of ended up with some funky lineups in there to kind of disrupted the maybe the pace and the tempo early. Um, but but all, all in all, it was OK. I mean, you know, we I mean, I think our OER was, you know, just a little bit under one point two. And, and, and I thought we left a lot of meat on the bone with some missed layups. Um, you know, you make a few of those and your, your OER is one point three, one point three, you know, which is amazing. So. Um, you know, the, the nitpicky part of me is, yeah, we, we need to be a little bit better, um, you know, but, but overall, it's not a bad start, and, uh, and I think there's some things for some guys to learn from, for sure. Kirk characterized the, the 28 field goals on 25 assists as Warriors basketball, and then actually yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, we, we really value sharing the ball and moving it around. And, um, and you know, it was great. I mean, it, it's great when teams play with, with that type of joy and togetherness. I think it's fun for the fans. It's fun for the coaches. It's fun for the players. And, um, you know, I mean, 25 out of 28 maybe is a little bit of an anomaly. But, um, but all in all, it, it's definitely um, a step in the right direction. The, the biggest thing I was happy with today overall was just – I think we had six turnovers and, you know, maybe we had some that were felt like, you know, we're close to turnovers. I mean, DT through some of those lobs, you know, I, I don't know who would have caught them, you know, I mean, they were so high and, uh, and, 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 and again, it's, it's part of just maturing as a team, you know, and Kim missing the dunk, you know, that, that type of stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, we, we just want points and, and, and I, and I, and I don't need style points. We just need points. So those will be conversations we'll definitely have. Looking at Kirk Fuse's game, 17 points, but more, uh, more importantly, five assists, no turnovers. How do you think he performed it? I thought Kerr was great. I mean, Kerr, I mean, I, I've – you know, been steadfast in my belief in him, and and I think he's going to have a really good year, and I think he's going to be one of the better point guards in college basketball. Um, he, he really gets us going, and, and and on top of all the good things he does on offense, um, I think there's still room for him to grow, which is awesome on that end, but I think he's a really good defender. So uh, I, I love having him out there, and I feel good, you know, every second he's out on the floor. What do you think of a guy like Benedict when he has an off like this? Um, you know, it's going to happen. Um, you're a really good player. You know, let's let's step back and take a look at maybe maybe where some of the struggles were and and address them. You know, and and, and I think most of Ben's struggles were you know finishing, and you know it, it's it's a it, finishing's a lot tougher than it looks. And you know, especially when you get in there with a, the physicality and the vertical contesting these refs are allowing. Um, you know, it, it, I think if he makes a few of those lay-ins, you know, we all feel a little bit different. But, but all in all, I mean, he's getting right to where he needs to be. He just has to kind of refine his plan in, in, under the lights in the moment and make sure he's, you know, getting, you know, baskets or free throws when we get the ball that close to the rim. Is that what you kind of want to see from Umar when he's out there with knocking people down? And well, I don't want him knocking people down because those are offensive fouls. But, 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 yeah, I mean, for sure, I want Umar to become a, a little bit more of an enforcer. And Umar's had a tough journey, and, and, and he's been with me for a long time, and, and it hasn't been easy. And, and I love him for sticking with it. And it didn't start easy today. And, you know, he'd, he had a tough scrimmage at St. Mary's, kind of battled back. Then we kind of got on him, and he really picked it up the next couple weeks in practice and was getting better, I mean, making real progress. And you could see his body changing. You can see his, his – his production on the court changing. And then today, you know, it's funny, that first game, I mean, the first thing or two didn't go right for him. And I think he gave up a free throw block out right when he got in the game and, and maybe another mistake. Um, and I just told him, this game challenges you, and it doesn't, doesn't let things come easy. And, and, and you got to keep you know, your head up and keep fighting and keep moving forward. And, and I was really happy to see him kind of respond. And I think Justin threw him a lob, you know, and he, he kind of went up and caught it. And then came down and dunked it, which was huge progress for him. So um, things to build on for sure. Yeah, it was great. It was great to see him, you know, just be a physical force and, uh, and, and, and a rim protector and, a, and, and rebound above rim and, and finish shots. And I think he did a great job shooting his free throws. How did you think uh, Pella looked? Uh, you haven't really been able to do 
I thought Pella looked better today than he has in practice, you know, which didn't surprise me. Um, Pella's a, a really good player, and, and he's kind of been feeling his way in practice a little bit and, and you know, maybe overanalyzing things a little bit. And I thought, you know, he's an experienced player. If we get him out under the lights, and, you know, I didn't have any, you know, like hard minute thing on him tonight. I just kind of wanted to see how he played, and I was just hoping he had a, a good play or two to build off of, and I think he did. How much film study do you do on a game like this? Can you go home and watch right away? Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll watch the, the film tonight. And, you know, I mean, everybody, I like everybody to kind of watch it individually. Um, you know, coaches are, you know, are world famous for everybody getting in a room and watching the same film together. And it, it turns into a five hour marathon. So we'll all go home with our families, watch it individually, kind of get our notes and our thoughts together. And we'll, and we'll, you know, get together, you know, tomorrow mid morning and kind of, you know, debrief on the game and then you know the great thing about college basketball is you have one coming up three days later so you know we'll, we'll start what can we get better at and what can we learn from the last game and what do we got to do to try to find a way to win the next one what impressed you most about the way Curtis uh just got great feet um you know great activity great energy he's tough he's gritty you know and uh and you know he's got a knack for legitimately taking charges and uh, i mean he's you know, I mean, he has maybe the best charge-taking percentage I've ever seen. I mean, it seems like he's 80 90% of the time, you know, he's getting charge calls, which is and, – and they look like charges to me. So I'm, I'm, I, I love having him out there. I mean, and that – and we put him on, the, you know, their best player to start the game, the cone kid, and he, he bird-dogged him. He did a great job staying all over him. And then we switched to put some size on him with DT, which is, you know, a great – you know, to be able to pass the baton to the next guy, and and I thought it was they they they, they but the combination of who we put on him and how we guarded him, I thought was really effective. Who does Kerr remind you of? Oh my goodness, Kerr reminds me. I mean, you know, I mean Kerr. I mean the easy ones, you know, T.J. McConnell, Kevin Pangos, you know, those type of guys. They play hard, and uh, you know, maybe has some of T.J.'s grittiness and Pangos shooting, and uh, you know, and 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 I hope he continues to learn to get those guys, you know, passing and feel for the game, which I think we're getting close on. Overall, do you have very good contributions from the guys who were here last year? I mean, is that maybe not a surprise? Yeah, I mean, the, the guys, I mean, I, I've, I mean, I've told you guys from day one, and it wasn't lip service. I mean, it was really important to get a lot of the guys back, you know, that, that were here last year. And those guys, you know, were well coached. They had experience as young players. You know, and I'm sure there was a lot of growing pains last year, and it was good to just get get him a foundation of experience. Um, and then coming into this year, we were able to build on it, and uh, and we're going to continue to build on it. And 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 guys, I think we got a great core group. You know, that can that that can get Arizona basketball to where everybody went back to where we want to be. You know, in, in the next you know two to three years. And and and, and obviously, we're going to give this year everything we got, and we're going to see what we can squeeze out of this year. But we got a great nucleus moving forward. Kurt said you, you encouraged him to wear the headband. Is that <laughs> probably not? No, but uh, but you know what? Hey, I, I just tell Kerr this: like Kerr has some swag. As long as he's he plays with confidence, he plays with high effort, and he plays with intelligence. Okay, then I'll I'll let him be swaggy. Okay, but if if he doesn't play with intelligence, okay, he doesn't play with great effort. Okay, then then he can't wear the headband. So th th that that's the rule. I mean, you, you have pretty loose rules on as far as individual stuff they want to do like that, headbands or shoes or... Yeah. I mean... I mean, listen. I mean, tattoos. I can't have any. I mean, that's their their business. I mean, uh, but but as far as like that type of stuff, um, you know what's crazy? I don't even notice it. I couldn't tell you what pair of shoes anybody wore today. I couldn't have told you Kerr wore a headband. Um, I, I'm here to watch a basketball game and coach the team. And you know, I mean, if if I start to notice it, then it's probably not a good thing. Um, so, but but all in all, as long as they're respectful of the game, their teammates, our program, you know, I have no problem with guys, uh, you know, individually expressing themselves. So after what you said the other day, in terms of you don't really get nervous on, on game days, were there any nerves? To... No, not really. I mean, I took a nap at home, woke up a couple hours for the game, jumped in the shower, came down here, watched my son's game in my office, and then... Uh, Went down, talked to the team about 30 minutes before the game, and let it rip. You know, I mean, you know, like I told you, the game's going to start at 8:30. So, I mean, me being nervous and uptight all day, I don't think that does anybody any good. 
they won. They won. So he's, he's doing great. He's a freshman going through things a lot of freshmen do, finding their way, trying to find a way to get on the court. But, uh, but they won. He texted me, and he was really happy. They just told us right now we had 25 assists. So that's what we like. We like sharing the ball, playing running gun basketball. You know, Kirk got hot. How much points you had? Like 17? Don't know. Oh, yeah. Somebody, I know somebody in here, no? How much you had? 17? That's crazy. Like, he got off. You feel me? So, yeah. <laughs> You're so good at it. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, like Devin said, uh, I think we made 20, 28 shots and 25 were assisted. So that's, that's some Warriors basketball right there. And uh, uh, defensively, I feel like we, I mean, we did a great uh, scouting on them and we were like really prepared for the game. So uh, I think in general, we can, uh, we can be with the, happy with the win tonight and uh, get back to work tomorrow. You guys talk about the field goals. Is, uh, is there a percentage you guys are looking for in that range there? I mean, yeah, you're trying to make shots. <laughs> Did you notice anything different between when you were able to get in transition as opposed to being in the half court? you think that maybe when, when you couldn't run, it wasn't as effective? No, nah, we always got a plan if they stop the transition, you know. I feel like we run our offense to the best of ability. And obviously, we scored on a lot of assists, so our offense on the half court worked and our transition worked. Uh, for either of you guys, uh, what was it like just playing in front of a crowd like that against uh, another team? Man, I loved it. Like, I see why, like, like, this is why you come to Arizona for stuff like this. Like, packed out house, double header, you know, fans out there screaming our names. It's crazy. Like, even though we had an exhibition, it's still like this was a real good feeling, you know? Like, we've been waiting for this all our lives. Last year, it really like changes like how we play. Like, I'm an energy guy, the crowd get into it, I get happy, like, I like that. And then he gets a few threes, the crowd is screaming boom, you know, like he don't keep shooting. What was that experience like for both of you guys playing last year? Yeah, I mean, it was day and night. Uh, uh, last year, obviously no fans. Uh, kind of, I don't know. It was super, super weird to even like play basketball, like all this mass situation and whatever. And plus, I feel like we have a lot of guys on the team. If if the fans get behind us, they get they get themselves going. Uh, I'm really emotional guy. Dalen's really emotional guy. Ben, Zoo, even Zoo gave some emotions. So <laughs> if Zoo is giving some emotions, that means that crowd is doing something right, and right. he's doing something right too. Thanks. So yeah, crowd. Is that something you don't see out of Zoo's too much? <laughs> You done. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, we tried to get him more like, you know, um, get more out of him, uh, you know, uh, but um, today he did a great job on it. I mean, he screamed last game when he dunked it. Yeah, so. that's what I'm saying. When fans are in the, in the stands, right. we can get something out of him, yeah. <laughs> so fans got to keep coming. Yes, sir. <laughs> sir. Have you always been a guy who's able to take charges and, and just kind of how you can develop that and, and not being afraid in those situations? Uh, yeah, I kind of take pride in my charges. Uh, I feel like it's super important, uh, not only for me, but for the team too. That kind of sets the tone that we're going to play hard. So, uh, Also, I'm super happy that Pelle took some charges. So <laughs> it shows that, you know, it's, uh, what's the word? Rubbing off on everybody. Contagious? Yeah, that Contagious, yeah, that's yeah. the word. So, yeah, you know, if you take charges, then it shows that you're, you're playing hard, you're ready to play and kick some ass. Yeah. Crowd, I mean, did it seem like it was kind of like you remember? Yeah, it was exactly how I remember. I remember red and blue. I remember the dunk contest. Like, I remember, like, like, like I still have visions about it, like how it was. And after last year, seeing, like, we playing, everybody could hear each other's shoes squeaking. You could hear coach screaming. Like, now it's like you got to really listen to what coach is saying on the sideline. You got to listen to the bench. And it's just a lot of energy. Like, you know, playing defense, everybody screaming. He hitting threes, everybody screaming, it just makes you want to keep doing that, you know? How, how much can Christian be a guy that can go out and get five, six blocks? He could do that every night. Like, he does it every day in practice, and he's got so much better over the summer and this offseason. So it's like, that's nothing that we're surprised about, about. Like, we see him do it all the time. So we just hope he stay consistent about it and just keep doing it. Yeah, I want to say also about Christian that, yeah, Christian has really developed, and I'm. Uh, I want to give a shout out here to Ricky, Foyce, and uh, Rem, and all these guys who came in and you know started to work out with us, and uh, we put in a lot, lot of work. It's only game one, but like we gotta 
keep building on it, keep working, and uh, we're going to be good. Yes, sir. What do you guys think, though, just seem like overall, not only you two, but, but uh, Zoo and Kristen, too, a lot of the returning guys really making a huge impact tonight, despite all the change. I mean, do you guys figure it might be that way, or do you take some pride in the fact that you were? I mean, I feel like we experienced, we went through college one year. So obviously, like, we know how it's going to be like. So we just trying to t take the freshmen and the younger guys, the guys that haven't been here under our wings and make, make this a whole team thing. You know, like, soon, sooner or later, you're going to be talking about Adam, Shane, some other guys on like Justin, even though Justin's older, but he hasn't been here, you know. You're going to talk about them guys like they've, like they've been here all their lives, you know. So we're just trying to make everybody on the same level as us. Jalen, you had six assists in the first half. Were you looking to find others first? Is that what you were trying to do, or is that just how the plays played out? I mean, that's the way our offense is. I was in a lot of positions where I could either shot it or throw the assist, and I take pride in my assist. So that's, that's how he plays. He passes the ball a lot. Passes it, yeah. What he said. How much of that is that the system, Dalen? I mean, you had that potential. It seemed like last year. That's why you started a lot. I think uh, just. That, that you have the ball handling. I mean, is it coming out more in the system, or is it a matter of you just having more experience and more comfort with your... I think it's a little bit of both, you know. Um, I've always played with, like, with a pass-first mindset, and so now I feel like in this system I'm allowed to show my vision a little bit more. So I just feel like that's just how it's going to be this year. Didn't you always play point guard, though, growing up? Yeah. Um, it's just kind of easy just to handle the ball and facilitate for you? Yeah, I've been doing it all my life, so. Any more questions for Kerr or Dalen? Kerr, the, the headband is becoming popular. Where, where did that come from? Uh, uh, technically, I was wearing the pink headband uh, because of uh, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month uh, last month. But uh, since my practices were so good, Coach Carter came up to me and said that, man, you got to get the headband and you got to start playing with it because you play good with it. So. Uh, after that, I kind of asked uh, Mr. Zona Briggs uh, a headband. He gave it to me, and uh, yeah, I'm going to keep rolling that. <laughs> did Ben come into play there, or did he wear his for another reason? Uh, yeah, I don't know. you got to ask Ben about that, but uh, it's kind of cool that he wears it too. It's like a you know, team thing. Did you guys want to before last year? I don't, know, I don't think you were it wasn't allowed. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know really about last year.